Hello from Mobile World Congress for Bit by Bit Leadership Conversation. It's a bit different today. I, it's not like I'm in a you know, glamorous room, but there are lights. <laughs> I'm going to be using a new form factor, which has been in the market for a while. It is the Meta Glasses powered by Qualcomm. Uh, and uh, uh, I say the new form factor because I really strongly believe that um, distribute computing it will become a thing of the future, near future. And we start to see some of the glimpses of this. And I'm here on the Qualcomm stand with Ziad Asgar, who is the SVP of XR. And that's why we're having these things. Indeed. <laughs> so I am going to wear mine. I'm and already wearing mine. I'm going to start with asking you, um, for me, I don't know, like bringing AI to this form factor, and as I tried it in New York with Gemini, was such a, a natural match of these two things coming together to deliver real power to consumer. Is that where you see this form factor going, or am I just dreaming of something that is going to be hard to provide? No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. The agentic AI and agentic AI flow is something that basically is absolutely the right device for it, really, as a smart glass. See, short of you carrying your smartphone and carrying it such that the camera points at everything that you're looking at, you cannot really do that because you need the context information that comes in from the camera. And then that multimodal AI needs to understand what you're looking at. The great thing about these glasses is that it sees what you see, it hears what you hear, and that is why it is the best interface for doing agentic AI. So what you see with Meta, with Llama, or what you, you would see with any other AI model, it allows you to be able to integrate what the human is doing with those AI models, and that's the true strength of a form factor like the smart glass. Today, when I wear these glasses, mm -hmm. the Meta glasses, I, for me, the two things that are uh, maybe underappreciated from people is how much you gain from the freedom of not having something in your hand. Um, and the other part is, which blows me away about the quality of these glasses, is how little uh, bleed there is from a noise perspective. And so when I was walking in Barcelona yesterday right. listening to music, and I could be aware of my surrounding mm -hmm. and still listening to my music, and nobody was any wiser next to me that I was doing that. That's right. So th this is really powerful because just imagine, you go to a concert or something, like what do you see in front of you? All you see are screens. It's people holding their phones. Just imagine that if people had these glasses, you could basically capture those moments without actually being, you know, looking through a screen. You can now look at basically the actual happening, whatever is going on around you. I have a picture of uh, one of my, uh, you know, team members. His kid was learning how to bike. And he captured it on Meta Ray-Bans, and it was such an amazing moment because otherwise he couldn't be biking and holding his phone with it, right? So it's really a much more of a seamless sort of an experience. I think that's one. Secondly, the other key thing is that it really allows you to be able to get the best in quality audio, like you pointed out, without really having any bleed going out to other people. So I think best in class audio, best in class uh, AI, best in class camera, because the, the big challenge is, you know, the camera is seeing this large canvas. Imagine that you're holding a menu or something like that. It's a very small portion, mm -hmm. and even in that small portion of the frame, you need to get the best image quality, and that's where Qualcomm does an amazing job. The other part that I think is, interesting and always with the glass for, glasses form factor mm -hmm. there's question on oh you know will consumer actually use this um i am as blind as bat so i've been wearing glasses since i was tiny and then mm -hmm. i moved to contour lenses um, mm -hmm. i can tell you that i still wear glasses mm -hmm. and to me the advantage of that freedom of my hands but also to your point seeing what you're seeing mm -hmm. It's great, is yeah. the, and the quality of the picture that you can get now on these glasses compared to a phone. People can't tell when I show picture by, you know, like the two pictures together taken with a phone or not. That's right. What the difference is in quality. So mm -hmm. it, we come a long way. Where do you think, if you're thinking about AI and bringing together voice but also visual, mm -hmm. so along the line of what is coming with Samsung and Gemini, right. is that the future? 
Yeah, I absolutely think that is the future, right? Just imagine when we talk about agentic AI, you want your AI to be able to do large tasks for you, right? That's the real purpose and intent. Now imagine that you are standing in front of a friend and you say, hey, can you schedule dinner with, with my friend here, right? Can you just schedule dinner for us at 8 p.m.? It knows which friend I'm talking about. It can then identify your face, let's say. Go into the text message that you sent me earlier. Hey, I might want to meet at that French restaurant or something. Get that contextual information and be able to do that task from end to end. The, the whole story that people are talking about, this appless uh, world, it can actually go into Yelp, figure out which restaurants have the highest rating. It can go into Open Table, figure out the, the right time and do that reservation. It can go to Google Maps, basically figure out the closest restaurants. All of that task from end to end can be done on the device. And that's the true promise of real AI agents. And I think that's why I feel strongly that the best interface for doing AI comes down to smart glass. You don't need to hold anything in your hand. You don't need to be really, you know, technology is best when it's not intrusive, when it's transparent. And I think that's what smart glass gives you. The other part that is interesting to me is when you're thinking about uh, privacy, because mm -hmm. you mentioned all these things that you can do. I think that sometimes people are getting I don't, I don't want to say too worried, because obviously being worried about privacy and security is important, but just because is on this form factor, it doesn't mean that you cannot be very transparent. So for instance, now you're recording with your glasses, but I can see a light that exactly. is recording, right? And so I think that is going to be more of a social norm that is going to have to get used to new form factor than anything else. For me, the hardest thing that you're doing now, which is mm -hmm. nodding, is where I'm trying not to, so that people don't get uh, the, the <laughs> head uh, <laughs> with the head nod. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, the, how do you feel about security? Yeah, yeah I think security-wise, uh, I mean, just like you pointed out, when you take a picture, a light comes on, it signals to the user that you're taking a picture. When you're recording a video, you have this blinking light that's telling you that the recording is going on. But I really want to draw a contrast to when you take a picture with your smartphone. Mm -hmm. How is that different, right? If you go outside now in the booth and take a picture of everybody over there, most of the time they don't even know you're taking their picture. On the other hand, with a smart glass, actually, it is telling you that somebody's taking your picture. And with the amount of zoom that's available on a smartphone today, a person would have no idea that a picture is being taken. So I think, I think over time there is greater sensitivity perhaps to glasses, but I do think that with these things that people are doing to build confidence where people know that they're being recorded or not, I think will give people the confidence to use these devices more and more as time goes by. And then of course we can do other things where for multimodal AI, I don't need to grab the faces for example. I just need to understand that I'm at a show or I'm outdoors or indoors. So we can actually even create technology that actually covers the faces. So we are looking through a lot of other techniques to be able to make it easier. And I think that was my point about um, mm -hmm how much is perception and just because of the new form factor then not something that we already do, right? So to your point about, I can take a picture now with the phone and the person doesn't know because I'm very far away Absolutely. and I'm losing the Zoom. It's just about educating people and creating, in my opinion, creating good habit, right? In That's how right. you use certain technology. That's right. But the other part I want to you know, draw your attention to, this will help people get more comfortable with this form factor. But I think the, the true power of it is something that I've talked about for the last four or five years, which is why on-device AI is better. On-device AI is better because it allows you to personalize for each one of us. This camera or the ability to be able to really see what the user is seeing, it is the best tool for personalizing. So for example, if I ask a question of an agent, the fact that I am you know, in a place where I'm talking to one person, the fact that it is a, a show floor uh, close by, the fact that there is a bright light over here, uh, the fact that I'm talking to a person that's an adult versus a child, you can actually personalize that agentic experience using those pieces of information. And that personalization along with all the other data that's available on the device makes for a far better generative AI experience than otherwise possible. And I think that's the true strength of Qualcomm. I also would like to point out that we always start this conversation for a very, from a very abled perspective, but there's a huge opportunity as an accessibility feature for mm -hmm. people, right? To the point about we see what we point at. And so the ability of having something that is a, a normal pair of glasses that is able through the audio telling you what you are looking at mm -hmm. and describing, 
the phone does that nowadays. It's part of the accessibility feature on a lot of the phones that we have. But you have to hold the phone in front of you, right. and sometimes it's, it, it's hard to do that. You know, it could be that a person has more than one um, physical limitation. So um, that, yeah. I think, is the great power as well. No, this is awesome, right? So exactly what you're talking about, for those who are visually impaired, this would be an awesome scenario for them because, for example, you're st standing at an intersection. Now the device can tell you that you should not cross at this time. There's a car in front of you or the, the light is red at this point in time, right? Those are absolutely useful. But now imagine that we have these glasses but with displays in them. And now people who perhaps cannot hear, as a person speaks to them, they can actually see the text transcribed right in front of them on the display. Right? It, it would be amazing. So I really think that people who are differently abled would benefit immensely from something like this. But now you can even envision, uh, there's actually a service that uh, I think works with Meta Ray-Bans where an actual user comes on and tells a person what they're looking at. But some degree of on-device AI, for example, can tell you, hey, which of the teas is decaf? Mm. Or which of, the, which of the coffees is uh, a particular flavor? Which car is red? Am I looking at red apples or I'm looking at green apples when somebody's shopping at a store? Mm -hmm. I mean, that degree of AI can be running on device. And I mean, I'll, I'll show you more and give you just a glimpse of what's coming up, but I want to get to a point where I'm able to run small models purely on the glass. Just like I showed like a few years ago where the seven billion parameter model was running just on the phone, I want to show a case where a billion parameter model is running just on the glass even if you're disconnected from the internet, if you're not connected to any other device, purely the smart, phone, the smart glass will be able to run that one billion or sub billion parameter model. I think that's when people start to really realize what this form factor can do. And I think that that's the power of on device is the fact that, especially when you're talking about a device that is an accessibility device, you cannot just tell me, well, now you can't access that functionality because you're not connected to the network, right? And so to your point about the power of being on device and being able to tell me if when I'm shopping, if it's a green apple or, or a red apple, right? might seem trivial to somebody who can see. That's right. Uh, but somebody who's visually impaired, that makes a world of difference. Absolutely. And then I think this also brings together another uh, key concept that we've talked about, which is the, I call it the, you know, the constellation of devices around a human. So you know you have your smart glass in time, you have your smart watch, you have your phone, you may have your earbuds, you may have a PC. And what we think with the on-device AI you can do is that you can actually get context from each of those devices. Now what do I mean? Smart watch, the way I think about it, it actually looks inside you kind of. Tells mm. you your heart rate, tells you your level of stress, tells you your blood pressure. Smart glass shows you outside, right, your context. And then the smartphone has, for example, your location. It has other pieces of information, right? So you bring all of that together, and you can, again, do an amazing job of doing much better AI, but at the same time, figuring out which device is the best suited at any given point in time in that constellation of devices to do AI, right? Such that, let's say, the phone is there. Don't use the LLM on the smart glass. Mm. But let's say you go for a bike ride or for a, for a run, now do the LLM on the, on the watch uh, or on the, on the glass, right? Those are the kinds of things that we'd be able to do in coming days, in my opinion. Well, I'm looking forward to that world. Thank you very much for being with us today and more to come soon.